mentioned, Linderbaum, as you mentioned, Ajobu, the linebacker that they decided to go get. I think you look at it and you say, well, where, where are they replacing Hollywood Brown at? There's no receivers. All they got is Rashad Bateman that we can look forward to. But I'm going to tell you this. There's a kid named Devin Williams, Devon Williams from Oregon. Wasn't drafted. He was signed as an undrafted free agent. And I understand why, because he's got, you know, they got to manage him a certain way. But I promise you, if they get him right, oh, my God, oh they got him. And knowing that T. Martin is there as a receiver coach, along with Keith Williams, two guys that can mentor the, that particular kid, I think Lamar Jackson will be satisfied if they can keep him straight. If they can just keep his mind right, that'll be a real interest win. I know you say undrafted. But it's not like that. He just got some other stuff that he was dealing with. Well, if Devin Williams like that, sign me up. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like got to made it. How to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens. Like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You two team, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like got to made it. How to made it. So YouTube team keep it clean What's going on It's Engraven here with another video And in this video Thank you all for your patience Because I have been hearing so many people What do you think about Devin Williams Hey we just signed Devin Williams You gonna let us know about him Hey Devin Williams We might have our guy He might be a diamond in the rough I've been hearing so much talk About Devin Williams That I finally got an opportunity To see for myself uh, and I was happy with what I saw and I was just envisioning like, man, for Devin Williams, wide receiver, 6'5", 200 pound wide receiver, how could he fit in with the Baltimore Ravens? And one of the first things I did when I watched him, I envisioned a scenario where the Ravens have the ball and they just, they just need a big play. They just need something because the offense may have been going a little bit slow early on and they just need a big play to just give them a spark. So it may be second and th or third and long. Lamar Jackson drops back. The protection is good for now, but then some of a pass rusher just, he creeps through. So Lamar Jackson scrambles out to his right, and he throws it up. And he got Devin Williams and a cornerback one-on-one. -on -one. And that would be a matchup that I would trust Devin Williams to make that play. That jump ball, that 50-50 ball that the Ravens just need to incorporate so much more of, he would give you an opportunity to do it. That was one of my favorite traits about him when I watched him, the 50-50 ball. He is not afraid to jump up and go get it. Those contested catches, he specializes in those. He will box you out as if you're a corner, and he will make sure that he gets his hands on the ball and not you. Um, so I, I just I love that, and I just feel like the Ravens, as far as the fade routes and the jump balls, and I know this is something, something that we said before on here that we just want to see the Ravens incorporate more of that into their offense, and that could be on Lamar, and that could also be on Greg Roman, but it needs to be incorporated a lot more because it could take simple things, simple fixes, simple tweaks could take this Ravens offense a long way. So with Devin Williams, he plays big but also he can also play a little small too now and when i say play small i don't mean that as a diss to him but what i mean when i say that is when i watch him he's a little bit twitchy now too now because he will catch the ball sometimes he gets somebody a little stiff arm say like, hey i wasn't the heisman winner but i'll show you what it looks like i put you on a trophy but then he would uh he would turn up field sometimes he'll try to <coughs> try to make somebody miss but he has very, very good control of his body, especially for somebody who is six feet five. <laughs> That's a tall individual right there. Um, but what he could add to this offense, man, just the yak. The yak. That's something that he likes to do. He is not afraid of contact. Uh, he will initiate contact, as a matter of fact, sometimes, too. Um, but then I wondered, like, man, what happened to how can this person this size who was actually a five-star recruit how could he go undrafted i i was just very concerned about that and i wondered like what's going on what, what did i miss 
And I'm sure I don't have all the information as to why he went undrafted, but some of the things I gathered, um, at first I looked at the, the situations because I know there was a little bit of confusion on where he was going to commit to when he was coming out of high school since he was so highly recruited. Um, and I heard some Florida State, there was some stuff with the Oregon Duck. It was just a lot of confusion. But he ended up going to USC, and he was at USC for two years, and it looks like there was a lot of, uh, it, was, it was underwhelming. Uh, his numbers that he put up was, were underwhelming. The first year at UFC, played four games, had four receptions, 87 yards, and a touchdown. Uh, and then um, he was at USC in 2019 as well, uh, and he just played in one, one, one game, one catch for 11 yards. And I know, um, I believe that's when he entered uh, the portal. Um, but there, with USC, his situation, I'm sure he wasn't a big fan of his situation because he had a lot of guys in front of him. Um, he had, of course, the, the first round draft pick, the guy who won, uh, Drake, a hundred, a hundred thousand dollars or however much he won off of that bet that he placed on Drake London being the first receiver taken. He was behind him. He was behind Michael Pittman, uh, Amonra St. Brown. So he had some guys at UFC that were, uh, they, they were taking away his playing time. Oh, and well, he wasn't taking away theirs. So a lot about football, a lot about these players. So much depends on being in the right situation. And for a lot of players that have had success, whether on the collegiate level or on the professional level, so much is about the being in the right place at the right time. Because we've seen it time and time and time and time again where this player will be talented coming out of college. It's like, oh, man, this dude's real deal. They go to a poorly run franchise or a poorly run organization. Everything fails. Everything falls apart. And that person's career is literally turned upside down in a bad way. And sometimes they recover, but a lot of times they don't. Because in the NFL, it do does really stand for not for long. And whether you're a first-round pick, you drafted high in the first round, you drafted late in the seventh, whatever it may be, you have to be at the right place at the right time or else everything can crumble. You look at, just to use these guys in, as an example, and I know these are two extremes, but you look at Josh Rosen. He was drafted very high in the first round. I want to say he was seventh overall, I believe, but whatever, wherever he was drafted, he was drafted high in the first round. So many people are like, oh, man, this guy's going to be an amazing quarterback, and it just didn't work out. Didn't work out, and the Cardinals moved on right away. He went to, like, the 49ers. I think he went to the Bucks. He went to the Dolphins, and I don't know where he is right now. Then you look at a guy like, and again, I know these are extremes, but they're just examples. And you look at a guy like Tom Brady, drafted in the sixth round, went to the right situation, and everything worked out wonderfully for him, <laughs> better than wonderfully. So, so much matters on where you are and if you're at the right place. But he felt like he was in the wrong place, back to Devin Williams. So he transferred uh, to Oregon. So in 2020, uh, he just played in five games, 15 catches, 286 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, but then in 2021, um, so last year, played in 10 games, had 35 catches, 557 yards, and four touchdowns. And when you look at those numbers, the numbers are, are very uh, underwhelming because teams, I'm sure teams, and teams look at more than numbers, but NFL is a production-based business. And if they're looking at you as a college receiver, they're going to wonder how your production from college can translate to the professional level and you can take your production and add it to theirs. But if you don't have much production, then that can decrease your value to them and, and how you're viewed uh, as a prospect and as a player and just as potential. So he didn't end up going drafted. And I know it's for a lot more reasons than that. I know I've, I've heard a lot about that. His quarterback play it definitely didn't help it, the situation at all. His quarterback play was not the best. Uh, so that's another scenario that could possibly benefit him. Uh, cause we, uh, and I believe, I believe that the Ravens, they signed his quarterback too. <laughs> so that could either help or hurt. But no, it, that could help because if the Ravens signed his quarterback, just envision this scenario. They're in training camp. They're in training camp. And Lamar is obviously running with the ones. Tyler Huntley, he's running with the twos. 
and whoever else is going to be running with the threes. But Devin Williams, he has his quarterback, and his quarterback and him, even though in college it was a little off, but they know each other, they have chemistry. So his quarterback is throwing to him, and he's making these plays with the, against the third team, and he's starting to turn some heads, and people keep hearing, oh, Devin Williams, Devin Williams, Devin Williams, Devin, who's that? So like, oh, the, oh, that's, oh, that's, that's the, oh, the 6'5", got the 6'5", receiver, oh, okay, all right, number two, okay. Well, not number two, because Tyler Huntley number two, but you get what I'm saying, oh, the, oh that's him? Oh, okay, nice. Oh, okay, but he did it against the third string, though. Coaches, they they uh they hear about Devin Williams. They're like, oh, you know what? Come here. We want you to go go practice against the second stringers. We're gonna move you up just just for the day. We just want to see what you got. If you really like that, like that, go ahead and practice against the second stringers. Say, for instance, he makes plays against the second stringers. Oh, okay. It's like all right, and he consistently makes plays against the second stringers. It's like, hmm. Okay, you know what? All right, that's that's cool. You did it against the third stringer. You did it against the second stringers. How about you try it against the starters? You see Marcus Peters over there? Oh, you know him. I know you do. Oh, that, you know Marlon Humphrey? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Physical corner, huh? Yeah. Go try that against them. We, we just want to see what you got. And if he could give them a run for their money, if he could really apply some pressure uh, to the Ravens secondary as a whole, going against corners, going against the safeties, he can make a name for himself with the Ravens. and Because he's, cause he's in a tough situation. Because I'm not going to sit up here and try to sugarcoat it like, oh, just because he's 6'5 and, and he's, he's a little twitchy for his size now, which is a good thing. I'm not going to sugarcoat it because we know what the Ravens situation is. We know their history. So he has a lot stacked against him. He already had a lot stacked against him coming out of college. He went undrafted, but now he uh, enters the league as an undrafted rookie free agent. So he has a lot stacked against him right here, right now. And I hope he makes it. Well, I really hope he makes it. But it's going to take a lot of work and extra work, too, because as an undrafted guy, you have to do more than the required. You can't just do the basic, the minimum and expect to get by. No, the guys that are drafted, they can barely do that. So as an undrafted guy, you really got to go the extra mile to prove to people, hey, I should have been drafted, but I wasn't. But let me show you what I can do now. Something that does give me a lot of confidence, and shout out to my guy JT for pointing this out. Something that gives me a lot of confidence uh, with Devin Williams and with a lot of the other guys that are on the team at the wide receiver position and anybody that the Ravens may have chosen to bring in. Keyshawn Johnson mentioned it as well. T. Martin and Keith Williams. Those two, they have an eye for talent at wide receiver. And... I would have to think that the Baltimore Ravens, who brought in those two, who both specialize at the wide receiver position, I would have to think that the Ravens consulted with them before they chose to bring in the wide receivers that they chose to bring in. I, I, would, I would have to think that because it's like, why wouldn't they? It only makes sense. It only makes sense. So not only would they help as far as the consulting is like, hey, this guy, hey, that, that, oh, he went on drafted, really? Okay, you know what? Let's bring him in. Trust us. But not only the process of recruiting him, but also developing him. The process of really trying to pull out that potential and try to help him take it to the next level, try to make him make that transition. And again, it's not going to be easy. It is not going to be easy. But with those guys on staff, things, they seem to be headed in a better direction uh, than what it had been when they weren't on staff. Ravens, of course, still got some issues that they got to get through. Uh, they still got some growing pains that's going to come with this whole, their whole just vibe at wide receiver. But it's part of the process. It's part of the process. If you've been struggling with something for such a long time, for forever, and you bring in somebody to help you, you ain't going to turn it around like that. <laughs> you certainly are not. And it shouldn't be expected that you're just going to turn it around like that. But if you are going to turn it around, then you have to be willing to make some changes. You have to be willing to do some things differently. You have to be willing to step out of your comfort zone. I remember that. But there are going to be some there are going to be some ugly times in the process. And that's fine as long as you're getting through those ugly times. 
So with somebody like a Devin Williams, the odds are stacked against him like crazy, especially with the Ravens organization. But I wonder, I wonder, because I'm sure he probably had his options as a, with different teams he could have chosen to sign with. But I wonder if the Ravens presented him with, all right, hey, Devin, look, we have a Rashad Bateman. We got a Devin DuVernay. We got a James Prochet. We got a Tylen Wallace. We got a Benjamin Victor. We, we got some guys here already, but we don't have a you. And you see, look, look at our free agency. Look at our draft. We didn't bring in any wide receivers. And in fact, Sammy Watkins, he went to Green Bay. We traded Hollywood Brown. Miles Boykin, he's with the Steelers now. So we, we lost three receivers. We lost those guys. We didn't bring anybody yet. So there's a spot, there's an opportunity for you. If you're really like that, if you are everything that we've heard about you and stuff that we've seen from you too, we're going to do everything on our end to try to possibly pull out your best potential, but we need you to do everything on your end because we want to see the, your best potential. We don't just want you to be a potential base wide receiver. We want you to be that guy, one of those guys, like Lamar said. So what's it going to be? Because you got to think about it. Um, guys, wide receivers, y'all already know how it is. With the, with the Ravens, a wide receiver would have to, for them to get a, a quality wide receiver, they may have to overpay. Because a lot of guys just don't want to come here. Because they know. They don't know about the system. And then with Hollywood putting that stuff out publicly too, even though he had already put it out publicly like two years ago. And a lot of people already knew. And even this was even before Greg Roman. The wide receiver has been an issue with the Ravens. Even before Greg Roman even stepped on the field. So it's a lot deeper than just Greg Roman. But that's a whole nother topic for another day. So Ravens would really have to show like he would have a legitimate opportunity. But again, it's one thing to show it. It's another thing to actually do it. And it's another opportunity. To, it's another thing to actually give that real opportunity. So I'm interested just... This is such, I mean, every, every single offseason is, but this is such an interesting offseason for the Baltimore Ravens because this is such a huge turning point in the organization. It's such a huge turning point. With everything going on with the uncertainty of Lamar Jackson, them trading away Eric DaCosta's first, first, not only first first round pick, but his first pick overall as the official Ravens GM. Ravens and them getting rid of all the receivers that they drafted in 2019, as a matter of fact. And them not even taking a receiver after trading their receiver. <laughs> so it, it's, it's just so many different ways that this, the rest of this offseason could go. And, you know, we're going to be with it every step of the way. But it's just I'm so like I'm, I'm very, very curious and excited to see how things are addressed. Do the Ravens go the old school Ravens route like a lot of people are thinking? Like, oh, we're going to get one of them older veterans. Here comes Julio. Oh, we're going to get one of the guys who's not an older veteran, but would he really take us to that next level, Jarvis Landry? And he will be solid. Will we get a speedster to replace a Hollywood Brown like a Will Fuller, who there's been a lot of talk about, but also there's been minimal talk about Deshaun Jackson. So what are the Ravens? Or the, are the Ravens going to be like, you know what? We going young. We going young. We rolling with our guys that we got that we drafted and we're going to run with some undrafted guys. What are the Ravens going to do? It's such a, a, a tough question. But again, it's a fun question to think about. We've had so many conversations with so many different people uh, in the comment section on Twitter on DMs or whatever about what are the Ravens going to do? And the fact of the matter is we don't know. We just really do not know. But it's fun to think about. And as far as Devin Williams, again, he has an opportunity here. He has an opportunity here because of how the Ravens have moved or really haven't moved this offseason at the wide receiver position. So he has a real shot, but he just got to show up. And like I said, he'll have to do extra work in order to make it. But it is not far fetched that he does. It is not impossible that he does, but it's going to take a lot. So we'll see how it goes. I'm rooting for him, rooting for him. Hope everything goes well, and I hope that he ends up showing out. And, and the potential, that potential that we saw from him uh, at Oregon, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't drawn out of him 100%, but we saw that potential. 
And let, let's let's get back to the reasons why he was a five star recruit. Because five star recruits they don't just grow on trees, man. Especially for somebody that size too. Hopefully, Ravens can pull out that potential. Ain't no chance for the man. Shout out to Graven.